depending on all the work that we do. Um, first slide, Jess, a um, little bit about us. You know, first off, you see all the staff there, myself, Jess, Natalie, uh, Tammy, and uh, Sheila are the uh, four key that have been with the NERIC project under its current, well, kind of current iteration. And collectively, uh, what you see there on that page is over 200 years of, uh, of working on the NERIC project. So we're, we're real proud of what we do. I think that uh, in many ways, two thirds of what each of us do, we work in a silo, we're kind of schmees experts in what we are. And the other third, we have everyone's back and kind of fill in for each other. So um, in those 200 years of collective experience, we have a good idea of what uh, what NERIC has done and how we formulated it. You know, I mean, we uh, answer requests. We're not just a uh, INR um, project, but uh, do a lot of research. And in many ways, we are a um, titled as Nidler's Library. Uh, recently, I kind of think of us more as Nidler Central because we collect so much Nidler information not just the research reports and the articles, but information on all the projects and what they do. And uh, it kind of goes to show how frequently the Nidler staff call us for uh, pretty uh, specific questions on their projects. Um, next slide. Um, a bit about our history. Um, as it was launched in 1977 as a uh, resource and disability rehabilitation um, repository, if you will, where uh, the feasibility study was written by um, uh, Judy Senkovich and at the Catholic University, along with um, the uh, Rehabilitation Research and Training Center at George Washington University. And basically that feasibility study put together what actually NERIC still is to this day, many, many years later, you know, it, it outlined what should be collected. And of course, that's easy enough, all the NIDLA research, but also uh, expounded on ways to enhance the utilization. And our website certainly does that um, in, in pieces. Uh, it uh, talks about the uh, multimedia rehabilitation collection. And recently with the, uh, um, all of our um, social media work, we kind of fit into that. So um, even back in 1977, the founding mothers um, had a pretty good idea of what's going on. And of course, quick fact retrieval service that we still do. Um, this is set up a uh, rehabilitation information network. And that's one of the big things I think that we do is uh, our communications back and forth with the projects. I know Jess talk a lot more about the NERIC liaisons and what we do under the uh, media and public education sections. Um, kind of one of the proudest things I like to talk about is um, NERIC has a, uh, the, our traditional card catalog has always been online. And that's um, probably one of the oldest and most comprehensive collections of certainly disability and rehabilitation information uh, that's always been online in the, uh, that was done through the uh, bibliographic retrieval system. The uh, next slide. Wow, we got to this one already. <laughs> uh, the, the good question slide. I think um, the, the, the big thing is for the, this, um, how can uh, NERIC help you? It, it's, I think it's through communication more than anything else. Um, not only is it, uh, we uh, have opportunities to have people come into the, the NERIC website and talk to us, but also we're reaching out to collect the publications and project information, um, or try to organize that into larger collections, um, our outreach to each of the projects frequently each year, and uh, really a, a give or take and so that we make this information available to a wider audience through the news and notes, our blogs and our podcasts. So 
So that's a little bit about the history of who we are and some of the opportunities that we'd like to uh, put out there for you guys to uh, use as you're working towards your knowledge translation goals. Um, I think the next project we're gonna, next slide, we're gonna talk about acquisitions in the collection and I'll have uh, Natalie. Uh, Nat Natalie, I'd like to say is, uh, there's nobody else on this planet that knows more about the re-updated database than Natalie. So Natalie, tell us a little bit about the acquisitions in the collection, what you've been doing for more than 25 years with NARA. Yes, thank you, Mark. So um, just want to talk about rehab data specifically. Uh, rehab data is our literature database. We have over 200,000 um, items in our collection. And what a lot of people don't know is that um, a lot of most of those items we do physically have in the collection. So it's not just a database of uh, uh, abstract and an indexing database. We actually have those items in our collection. So, um, so a lot of you might be wondering, what does rehab data consist of? Um, literature de dedicated to rehabilitation research. It's not just all Nidler, even though that is our mission to collect Nidler information. It's not all Nidler funded items. It's uh, literature just about uh, items that can assist people with disability in their daily lives. And um, I want to break down a little bit about the rehab data records. Um, in our database, what we collect is articles, books, reports, manuals, um, research briefs from the Nyla community and abroad. And um, we write an abstract up for that particular item and we um, display it on our website. People can come to our website and order any publication. Um, we'll normally send it to them. If it's a peer reviewed article, we'll send it to them by mail. And um, a lot of our publications like the um, research briefs and fact sheets, they're downloadable for free. So if you're a Nidler grantee and you've published a uh, research, uh, brief or a fact sheet, more than likely it's in our collection and it's downloadable. But we also provide in the record a, um, a link to your back to your website so the traffic will flow through back to you as well. Um, um, dissemination. So we'll send out any article that we have in the database, um, whether it's Nyler funded or not. And um, we have a minimal charge for sending out documents. Um, I think it's $5 for 100 pages. Anybody from around the country or the world can request documents from us uh, at a very low cost. And um, most of the documents are peer reviewed articles from the commercially published journals in the field of rehabilitation research. So um, anyone looking for the latest research in the area of rehabilitation research, um, can find the article on our database. Um, also, I wanna mention something about the APR data. So the APR data are the items that you report to us to on the um, report annually. Um, those items should be sent to us on a regular basis. Sometimes 90% of the times they are not. So a lot of times we can't promote or get that information out there because now we have to go back and collect it from the various grantees. So in order for us to properly promote your items, we need to get as much um, as we can before the APR comes out. So if you can, people, the grantees can assist by sending your documents in on a regular basis, we are able to do a better job of promoting those items. Um, I think that's everything. I'll probably have more later. <laughs> um, well and Jess, you uh, want to talk a little about, uh, I guess sure. actually Natalie, some of the, uh, I, you, you've touched base on most of these pieces. So, so Jess, yeah. Sure. So uh, you might be asking yourself, how can the NARA collection be a part of your knowledge translation toolkit? Um, and I was thinking as, as I was writing this, this um, slide, thinking about, um, the different stages of your KT planning process where we might fit in. 
So as you guys are um, developing your proposals and your KT plans, um, that that extensive collection of literature is available to, for searching for literature reviews, for environmental scans of what's already been published in that area, or maybe who is publishing in that area. Um, as your project is in progress, as Natalie mentioned, um, you can add your latest publications at any time from those newsletters and fact sheets, to the peer reviewed journal articles. As long as we have a copy, we will add it to the collection, get it through our, uh, our indexing process. And within 30 days, we, we aim to get everything into the database within 30 days. Uh, and it's everything gets tied to your program database record. So um, I know that we get emails on a fairly regular basis asking, can you make sure this is displayed in our program database record? That's the process for us. It comes to us, it goes into the collection, it goes into rehab data, then it gets connected to your record. Um, as you're wrapping up your project and you're thinking about um, how can we get what we've built up over these one, three, five years, how can we get it out to the world? Um, again, sending us your manual, manuals, your books, your guides, uh, we'll get it into the collection, get it indexed, promoted through our uh, monthly alert service. Um, if you are planning to sell or distribute that work, if you let us know, um, we will uh, mark the database record so that we don't distribute it, but instead we refer people to your distribution point or to your website. Um, and so through, through this collection, who are you reaching? You're getting your stuff into the hands of professionals like occupational and physical therapists and practitioner, other practitioners, researchers, advocates, and self-advocates, um, where you get thousands of searches in rehab data every month, um, pinging a range of topics um, from the most consumer oriented to the most professional oriented. Um, and we have that monthly alert service. We uh, let people know it's been added to the collection in the last 30 days. So uh, it, you cheat. The subscription is free. You choose your topics. If you are interested in um, employment and vocational rehabilitation, if that's what your research focuses on, someone who's picked that topic is going to see your outputs in that list within 30 days. Um, one thing to note is that anything that you produce under your grant needs to have your grant number uh, on it, in it not just handwritten, but published that way. Otherwise we can't index it under your grant number. So uh, keep that in mind. If you have any questions about how to, attrib to attribute your work, we're happy to help with that. Um, we have some uh, boilerplate language from Nidler we can share with you. It's also on our website. Um, if it was not produced under your Nidler grant, I know a lot of you have grants through um, Department of Education or through private organizations and agencies. Uh, private organizations and uh, universities, we can still collect it if it's relevant to disability and rehabilitation. We're happy to add it to the collection. Again, it won't get indexed on your grant number, but it will uh -huh. be added and indexed and made available through that same process. And if anybody has questions at any time during this presentation, if you want to put them in the chat, we'll um, try and keep an eye on it and um, uh, um, or uh, the sector folks can let us know if there's a particular question we need to answer or we'll hold it to the end. Hopefully we'll have some well, I'll talk fast enough that we'll have time at the end. Mm -hmm. We're going we're hopefully gonna allow like 10, 15 minutes if that works for you. Perfect. Minutes. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah, awesome. So um so Mark, I'm gonna move on to talk about the, what the media and public education team does. Yes. And Jess is the head of that team, so she's no better person. Go ahead, Jess. Okay. Uh so uh we write about you guys all the time. Um we are writing about you in our weekly news and notes from the Nidler community and beyond. Uh, in fact, we're working on that today, Marta and I. Um, we write about you in our Spotlight blog. Uh, we uh, Very often we put together uh, blog posts that are centered around a theme, like uh, the one we published this week was about Global Loneliness Awareness Week. And you all have done such a wonderful job in of um, focusing in that area and developing really hands-on tools for the community to use. So it was, uh, it's a lot of fun for, for us to find those pieces, put them together in these curated lists and share them. Um, Marta has a Spotlight podcast, which the, is in season two. Um, most of our episodes have focused on what we do, um, but we're starting to kind of think about highlighting what you all do in that podcast. Um, we have our research and focus series. These are um, uh, p lay language summaries of your peer-reviewed literature. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how that gets uh, 
put together. Um, we go to conferences and we do presentations that focus on what we do and what you have and how we can make it available. Um, and then we exhibit at those conferences. We also bring your stuff with us. We have a literature carousel um, and we also put pieces together in a Google Drive so folks can share, can save space in their luggage and just grab that URL and browse through it. Um, you all are all over our social media. Um, Twitter, we're mm -hmm. not giving up on Twitter yet. Facebook, Pinterest, we have these uh, boards that are organized by the project types and by some topics. Um, and we're just building our presence on LinkedIn um, as, as a center and sharing material there. Uh, we try to tag things as much as possible, tagging you if you have uh, on a social presence um, using the Nidler hashtag. Uh, if you are on socials, use it because Nidler is looking for it. I think early last year they did a report on uh, or Nidler had someone do uh, kind of a scan of the social environment to see who's talking about Nidler and they were looking for that tag. Uh, so use it, use it well. Um, we have a new fellow Friday uh, tag spotlight where we're highlighting uh, some of the Switzer fellows and we're going to start looking at some of the fellows in the other grant areas. Um, if we are not following you, uh, send tag us, tag us the yeah. Narek Info and Narek in Espanol are the Twitter tags that are down at the bottom. Um, and we'll, uh, we can put our uh, Twitter handles at the very end of this in the chat. So, did you have a comment, Mark? No, I'm sorry, go, go right ahead. I was just thinking about the, some more of the, uh, the, the podcasts that's uh, coming out yeah. and uh, uh, the work that uh, Marta does on those. It's a, a new effort this year. Yeah. You know. Yes, I'm finding it uh, trending very well. And I should note that um, all of our publications are uh, produced in English and Spanish. Marta and I work together on those. I mean, I don't help them with the Spanish. That's <laughs> that's their <laughs> my area. Um, but uh, so we work together on that. And um, they've done several uh, spotlight podcast episodes that are focused on Spanish resources. Yes. Uh, so how can you add us, needy, the media and publications team, to your KT toolbox? Um, so always, and I harp on this, Marta harps on this, um, send us your stuff for news and notes. Every week we're putting this together. So we're looking for your events, webinars, state of the science conferences, um, news about the accomplishments of you and your team, awards you've gotten, media mentions. Uh, this week uh, we spotted a media mention in the New York Times for the um, – Northeast ADA Center, we were able to highlight that. Um, opportunities to participate in your research. Uh, if you are looking for survey participants, focus groups, um, advisory board position openings. Um, uh, if you have fellowship openings, uh, we're gonna put that in there too. Every issue, we close it at three o'clock on Monday so we can run all of our editorial checks. Then it goes to Nidler to, uh, right now it goes to Pim, Dr. Pim Jaisutzawat who reviews it and approves it and we try to release it about 11 15 on wednesdays and then we give each piece uh, an extra boost on our social media channels various um the research and focus series i'm very proud of the research and focus series we developed it with um pim jai um we take your recently published peer-reviewed studies um they're selected for it for um, interest impact on the community, um, everything is reviewed for quality of the methodology. We write a lay language summary. We work with Pim Jai on that. And then we work with the lead or corresponding author to verify the accuracy. We publish it in English and Spanish, and uh, it's free for you to republish in any of your materials. If you want to put it on your website, go for it. You want to put it in your own newsletter under your masthead, be my guest. We'd love for you to share it. Um, the research and focus articles are always among the top hits in our uh, traffic to our website and in our uh, especially streaming from uh, Google searches. Um, and we've seen it picked up in a bunch of organization newsletters uh, like AHD, United Spinal. Um, I think I saw one once on the ACRM e-news. I was really proud of that. Um, so you can nominate your work uh, for research and focus summary. We do all the work of putting the lay language summary together. It's up to your the author to just make sure we got it all right. Um, and uh, the criteria are it has to be published within the last six months. Um, it has to have a clear Nidler attribution. Uh, and that's pretty much it. We will put it all together for you. And if I may jump, jump in, Jess, uh, 
I will say that research and focus is very popular with our Spanish speaking followers. Um, they, they really appreciate the work that y'all are doing um, and being able to read about it in a lay language and in their own language. Yeah. Um, make sure I shared that. Yeah, especially um, articles about uh, some of the most popular have been about emergence from uh, disorders of consciousness uh, mm -hmm. after traumatic brain injury, um, several articles on parenting with a disability and strategies that parents with disabilities have developed over time and their experiences in dealing with um, with uh, the like the family, um, the foster system, that kind of thing. Uh, so to wrap all of that up, as for, uh, to put yeah. us in your toolbox, send us your stuff. We love getting your stuff. Even if you think we've already seen it, send it anyway. Never mind getting duplicates. Marta never minds getting mm -hmm. duplicates. Um, and if you can get it to us by three o'clock on a Monday, we can probably get it into that week's issue, uh, if, especially if it's really uh, a, if, like events coming up soon. Uh, we do keep kind of a list of things that are coming up, uh, but we'll do our best to fit it in as soon as possible. So that's two of three of our, what we do uh, to make you all get all of your stuff into the community. Um, the third of the three uh, streams of activity for us is maintaining data on you. Uh, so I work with uh, Catherine Graves on this task primarily. Uh, and we here, again, we have three things that we do. We maintain the Nidler program database. We uh, have what we call the Nidler documents campaign, which Natalie mentioned briefly, the APR data. We make use of that to identify new documents from you and uh, get them into the collection. And then we're tasked with conducting some long-term follow-up on grants that are one, two, and three years past their official or extended end date. So briefly for all of these, the Nidler program database uh, contains information about grants from about 1986 to present uh, from 93 to present we have um, like a full record and it's a little bit spottier earlier than that uh, we're taking the print directories and converting them and adding those records over time um, right now we are in the process of reviewing all the records for the grants that are currently active and we are sending uh, alerts to the NARIC liaisons. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, these, this is a person that when we first find out about your project, we ask you who's a person on your team that we can contact a few times a year to make sure all the information we have is up to date. So someone who knows about staffing changes, changes to the research program, anything like that. So right now we're getting in touch with those liaisons over the next, now in the next couple months to ask you to review your record, make sure it's up to date, send us any changes. Uh, we'll get new records starting in September and we'll get those into the database over a couple of months. And each record includes uh, all the a brief description about your project. We take your uh, information that you submitted with your applications, with uh, your proposals rather. And we include uh, any of your links to websites or social media content uh, and this information is we use this all the time to answer questions from Nidler from ACL when they they ask us what have we funded in the last x number of years on uh, I don't know autism and transition to employment or have we funded anything on um, uh, maternal uh, maternal health was one question recently so we turn to this database to answer that uh, every record is also includes that list of pro of publications we've indexed uh, from under your grant number. Uh, so when and you get that call from us, sorry, go ahead, Mark. Okay, that's very important because um, frequently the program directory is the main uh, collection of all of the products that you've produced so that each time we get a new acquisition, it's added to that uh, program database and it makes it that much more available to researchers that are uh, pulling it up, uh, along with the, you know, the demographic information, uh, any of your websites, your social media um, uh, links. We have all of that uh, in that the program database record. Um, it's a, a very uh, robust abstract with 500 words describing that project and all searchable by uh, uh, keywords. 
so that's that's a real important piece to keep up to date, and that's why we do work with the NERIC liaisons to get that information. And as Jess is stresses, it's a uh, you know it's it's a communication, it's a back and forth. Uh, we uh, Natalie will tell you go to uh, long ends to try and collect all the information from the APR data to searching other databases um, to try and find this, but uh, the important thing is working with us to make sure we have everything that you've done. Um, it, uh, it's a never ending cycle, that's for sure. So, sure. so we do we do take, um, we do get some information from Nyler um, for each year's uh, annual performance report, the APR, and we do use that in our acquisitions efforts. We also use that information to conduct citation analyses on, by, on behalf of Nyler. Um, but I want to talk about the long-term follow-up. This is something we've been doing yeah. for the last 10 years. Um, it's completely voluntary on a grantee's, a former grantee's part, but um, we, good grief. My computer just asked me to do something. Totally inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not updating something now. Um, so uh, we reach out to uh, grantees that are one, two, and three years past their end date and um, invite them to uh, join us for an interview. It takes 20 to 40 minutes. And what we want to know is the story of your project. What's up until now? Um, have you continued to, uh, to most, we know that most researchers continue to conduct work long after a grant ends. Um, but do you can and you continue to publish, but do you have new outcomes? Um, who's been impacted? What are the accomplishments? Um, who's interested in the work that you're doing and what's coming up next? Uh, have you applied for patents, gotten new grants, uh, got a promotion based on the work you did uh, under your Nidler grant? Uh, we put all this together into a report, which we uh, turn into Nidler. They use it internally. Um, they uh, and sometimes they use it to look for things that they can share in their report to, con to Congress. It's not released publicly, um, but uh, it's very important for Nidler to understand kind of the long-term impact of what it funds. Um, and one of the ways they do that is by hearing your story. Uh, I love this task. Um, I spend the last three, th two, three months of the year um, and I love talking to you all about the work that you've done. You're so excited and passionate about it. It makes me excited and passionate about it. Um, and especially hearing even just some of the anecdotal stories about how an individual was impacted by participating in the project or uh, using a product that you developed or a, a new type of technology. So when we send those requests out, it's the first time we contact you will be a year after your end date. Um, think about participating. Again, it's totally voluntary uh, because you're you're no longer obligated under a grant, but it, help us share that story with the rest of the world uh, and with your, your now former Nidler officer. So how can you add our continuing activities to your toolkit? Look out for those requests from us, whether it's updating your project, reviewing and updating your project record. Uh, when we are doing that documents campaign and trying to track down all of your fabulous work. Um, when we invite you to that long term interview, um, as we're going to we're going to stress over and over again, the importance of having your grant number and that attribution on whatever you do. But it's really important for us. Um, not only does it make it into our database, but we search things like Scopus and PubMed. And if your work is indexed, if, if that number appears on your work, it'll be indexed in those databases under those grant numbers too. So make sure it's clear, it's it's present right there, um, and uh, and it's that it's accurate. Um, we've seen some variation in how grant numbers can appear. Uh, one other thing you could you can use us for as a tool is reaching out to other grantees. Um, the NILA program database is searchable on our website. And I do want to say um, the last few weeks, our website has been going through some things and we're working on it. We're working very, very hard with our IT team and our um, cloud provider to identify um, the issue, but uh, and we hope to have it resolved in the next few days. So uh, we appreciate your patience with that and, and understanding. Uh, there's so many, the, the technology, like listening to the IT guys trying to duke this out and my eyes glaze over, but we're really working really, really hard. So please be patient with our website. Uh, but 
you can I think, search the I think we've gotten over the worst of it. Okay. Uh, the, the your mouth to God's days. ears. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's been real slow. If you've been frustrated uh, uh, searching, please come back. Give, give it another try. Listen to the try. It's, been, it's been much better the last two days. Yes. Um, but if you do want to reach out to other grantees who are in your area, um, you can search the program database. Uh, at, every record has a public contact and every record has the PI's name. Uh, you can run a search and download the the results to an XML file and have it as a spreadsheet. Um, and that's a good way to, to see who it, who else is working in the Nidler community in, in your area or maybe a related area or even a diametrically opposed area. I don't know if that would be possible, but um, it might be. And that might be a person of value to reach out to and add to another person in your, T, your KT toolkit. Um, most importantly, when we get in touch with you, uh, answer the call. Yeah. You know, we'll be yeah. here to help you. And if you can help us uh, make sure yes. that all the information that we have about you is up to date, that would be incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. And you can contact us. I mean, feel free to contact us about anything, um, about your publications, about how do we send them. You can send them to me, Marta, anybody, Jessica, Mark, if ne necessary. <laughs> generic info um, at high tech services is the generic email address, which gets um, th at least three of us are watching that at any given time. So. At the bottom of each one of the slides. Yep. And our, our toll free number, um, uh, we are as you can see we're all remote um i am not that's portugal behind me i'm not in portugal would be nice but i'm not hmm. but um uh we are all checking our voicemails uh and we also have a chat space on our website you can get us through that um so one last bit of how how we can also be a tool in your toolbox mark do you want to talk about these um, I'm sorry. I was, I was concentrating on the, the <laughs> next slide. What can't we do? <laughs> okay. Well, so what uh, else can we do? Um, we can share calls for submissions. I know um, many of you serve as editors in, for um, journals in the field, um, or you're putting together your own um, a publication or periodical. Uh, we can share calls for submissions for these things, uh, usually through our social media, through our blog. Uh, we can post those fellowship openings, especially the Nidler funded fellowship openings we can put in our news and notes newsletter. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned about news and notes, the only things we can include in news and notes are uh, things that we can call Nidler funded. So uh, a Nidler funded publication, a Nid Nidler funded project hosting a webinar. Uh, except for the elsewhere section, which uh, highlights things that come from other federal agencies. Um, so everything in there has to be Nidler funded. Uh, if you have a fellowship that's not Nidler funded, we could share it elsewhere, but not in news and notes. Um, we can run custom searches for you and your team in rehab data, in the program database. Uh, we can share if, if you know we have something in our collection, you want to know how many times it's been downloaded or how many times somebody clicked on the link we included in news and notes, we can give that information to you. I know that's something that you all report in the APR and, uh, and possibly also in monthly or annual reports. Um, when we go to conferences or meetings, we can help uh, recruiting for your uh, opportunities to participate. Uh, I know we did that for Michelle Mead's SciHard project, handing out notices about participating in that and the various uh, swag that they were giving out. Uh, I mentioned connecting to other investigators. You can do that through the program database. Uh, and we might talk about cataloging your non nidler work. Uh, and uh, we are happy to help you with letters of support for your upcoming proposals. Uh, we can't say, you know, you guys are the best at this, uh, but we're happy to say we're, we will jump in and support you should you be uh, named the grantee of record for this particular project. And one thing we do point out is in those letters of support, what you have done in the past, so if you, you uh, have articles or pieces in news and notes, we you know can cite that. There's a number of uh, there's different partnerships that we do along the way with previous uh, uh, grant and add those to the letters of support. They always strand. The, the stronger the relationship we have with you, the stronger those letters of support are. Absolutely. 
so a few things that we can't do we are we're a contractor so we're limited by a very specific statement of work what we can and cannot do uh, we can't consult on your proposals uh, we we don't translate products for other folks marta is great at translating what we have but they're not uh available to help you with translating yours they can certainly recommend translation resources that they use on a regular basis um we can't really assist with remediating accessibility of your products. Uh, again, we can make recommendations for tools that you could use or uh, uh, services that do that. Uh, we can't sell your stuff. Uh, we're happy to refer people to your uh, your books, online bookstore or uh, some other way that someone can uh, can get a hold of your stuff we have distributed some grantee publications we currently distribute the life skills manual which was developed under a field initiated project so we could work with you on uh, doing something similar at, with that um, we can't really house or catalog technology uh, big products in, uh, that's we don't have the capacity for that uh, or to catalog an entire website and we can't provide any funds for your knowledge translation. I know when I talk to folks after their grants uh, have ended, they mentioned that it'd be great if there was funding specifically for knowledge translation. Um, and I wish I knew a great source for that, but I don't. Uh -huh. uh, again, we can point you to other grant resources. So that's a few things what we can't do. Uh, um, we, we try to be very transparent about what our capabilities are. Um, and how how much we can support your your work and many times we may not be able to do it but we can point you to a place or someone that might be able to help you out with that uh, right. piece so we're not just saying no sorry no. we're working with you on that so just a few more tools that you could add to your box that's not that are not NERIC although um, one of them is we have what we call the NERIC knowledge base which is a database of kind of everything that's not research not a publication they are agencies organizations and websites in the u.s and abroad that support people the independence of people with disabilities that's searchable on our website and again you can run a search download to an xml file uh, don't be afraid to check out other repositories and libraries uh, like eric which is education based omhrc is the office of minority health resource center the national center for rehabilitation training materials uh, the What Works Clearinghouse, these are all places that um, would be happy to have your your materials. Um, and turn to the grantee community. You know, we have, uh, in addition to NERIC and the Sector Center, which is, we are very grateful for, for you for hosting us. Um, there's the Center on Knowledge Translation for Disability Rehabilitation Research. There's one for employment research. This is the one for employment research. There's <laughs> one for tech transfer. Uh, there's going to be several new KT projects funded this year. So um, when you can get access to a NERIC database, try searching knowledge translation and see what comes up. Uh, other grantees publish newsletters and have blogs and would love to hear about what you're doing if it relates to their work. Uh, there's the Rehab Measures database, which is open for submissions. Uh, the Employment Repository, which is at BU. I think it's right here at the Center for Psych Rehab. Uh, ExploreVR.org is another repository. So explore what's what your own community is doing um, and and how you can take in how you can make use of it or contribute to it. And keep up with us. Sign up, follow our socials, sign up for our um, the newsletters. If if you go to Narek's front page, you can sign up for news and notes there. Uh, or if you know that everybody in your team should be signed up reach out to me and I'll and send me their email addresses and I'll add them to the database. Um, all of these things you can find on our website or nearby. Uh, our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Uh, well, when we distribute this, the, P, the um, PDF for this uh, slide deck, I'll make sure those are all live links to our, to our socials. And here's our contact information, mm -hmm. our email addresses. Uh, and we'll uh, make the LinkedIn links live when we hand this out as well. Um, and now we have a couple of questions for
for you before you ask us questions <laughs> and I will stop. Should I stop? No, I'll leave it up here. I won't stop sharing. Uh, but uh, if we can, there we go. So here's the first poll. So if we were to come up with a, a new publication or a service or some way that we could support you, which of these types of resources would be most helpful? A monthly virtual office hour where uh, Marta or Catherine or Natalie or I would start a Zoom session, welcome anybody in. You can ask us your questions, show us something. Uh, writing frequently asked questions about what we collect from you and how we promote your work. Um, setting up a virtual meet and greet with your team. So something like what we've done here or a bit shorter. Um, <laughs> joining your office session, your office, your virtual office meetings. Um, a monthly newsletter specifically for grantees. So like news and notes, but just about what we're doing and maybe highlighting the work of one or two of the grants that are going on. Um, uh, creating video guides to NARIC, to what we do, short, maybe five, 10 minutes. Um, maybe there's something we haven't thought of, um, but we would love to hear it. So go ahead and vote on this for me, for us. Let us know what, how we can help you in the near future. We'll leave it up there for like another 10 seconds. No stress, Jess, no stress. <laughs> Cool. Nice. Okay. And then we have one more question from you for you and Mark, this is your question. So you can read it. Off. Yes. Basically trying to get a feel for um, how often you go to NERC or think of NERC and specifically the website. That's always the, uh, the, the main conduit to get to us, I believe. So it's a little, the, uh, you know, if you've ever heard of us and this is the first time once or twice, and I put in this, for the past year, but it's just kind of a frequency to it. Or you think about us as once in a while you're doing research, are you writing a proposal and you need to do some uh, resource and maybe it's a cyclical. So, you know, three or four times a, a year during proposals, or are you a, a, a power user in, in, in the website more than once a month, more than once a week. So feel free to, uh, pick one out. We don't know who's uh, voting or not, so don't worry about us it, coming back at you. It's just kind of a, a barometer for uh, how the uh, website's getting used. So a couple more seconds. These are easy ones. Anyone else? Five more seconds, four, three, two, come back to your computer, vote. There you go. Thanks, Jeff. Right, cool. All right, I'm going to stop sharing now so we can get any questions from you or uh, if you picked the something else on that list of what we could, how we can help you, what was that something else? What would you, what would your dream NARIC resource look like, sound like, feel like, smell like? I don't know. Anybody here, uh, a, a NERIC liaison, have you been uh, named as, a, as a, one of our liaisons or, you know, I like to think of them as the uh, 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 point of contact, the main point of contact. We find that it's easier if you have one person for each project that can then go back to your project and disseminate it rather than try and hit everybody up on the project staff, especially as it is. So, and wondering how that, uh, are we, uh, are you getting enough information from us? I know we try to hit every uh, project at least, oh, what, four times a year. And some of them more frequently, I know that uh, Jess with the news and notes sends out, it works on sending out a notice each, each month, kind of saying, hey, what have you guys been doing? Uh, send us your information. Um, I know that uh, each week with the news and notes, I look at what uh, comes in and frequently I'm, uh, I'm surprised that we have one or two pieces that are volunteered that are sent to us, but more likely we have the NARIC staff that are out there come about and have found something. So I, in, my, in my heart, I'm like, oh, I wish that we had more things submitted and uh, try to 
encourage submitting more pieces to us. Um, but it's uh, it's always uh, good to be able to go back to a project and say, hey, did you know you were in news and notes? Or have them come to us and say, oh, thanks for putting us in. We really got you know a big push out of that, especially with the uh, opportunities piece. So frequently people are looking for uh, subjects, looking for someone to uh, help out with their research and you know, always open somewhere to try and get that one last three or four people participants. And news and notes is a good vehicle for getting it out to uh, um, hundreds, thousands. Of, it gets opened by a few hundred people every week. I'm just oh, lately it gets opened by more than a thousand people. Uh, yeah. we've, we've got about a, th so we, uh, we're sending out to over 4,400 subscribers and over the last two months, I would say our open rate is about between 20 and 40%. Um, and the click rate is, uh, can be anywhere from 8% to, uh, sometimes 30%. And that's of the people who opened it, who, how many people clicked things in it. So, um, it's and, and your stuff gets, gets seen, um, and as we mentioned, everything gets an extra boost on our social media. Yeah. And that not only just the click rate, Jess, but we're noticing people that uh, click in and stay with a uh, uh, where, where they've clicked and looked around. So it isn't a, oh, I looked at that and jumped back out for a second or two, but they actually are reading your materials and reading your pieces. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and it, as, um, oh. Sorry, Mark. Um, and as Jess has, said, we do uh, share it in social media, including our Spanner social media. Um, so, so your materials do get seen on an international scale because some of our Spanish followers are not just here in the U.S. They're in Spain, uh, Mexico, Brazil, all over the Spanish-speaking world. So, so it does get seen all over the world. Um, and I have noticed that a lot of times when I do share, when we do share um on um news and notes on our spanish social media that it does get picked up and that people do see it um, so we also know our subscribers for news and notes in our um on, on our social media they're also international on the english side um especially you know when we get out of office messages from uh <laughs> people in denmark and in france and uh, it's fun to read those in, in other languages and all those lucky people who get to take a whole month <laughs> <laughs> for there to take a holiday you know mm -hmm. so uh you got quite a quite a reach so um informal ta on uh definitely um especially as we're definitely um i think uh maybe just making sure that in that monthly or mostly monthly contact we uh, include something in there like where you're available to help with literature reviews to walk you through rehab data or, or any of the other databases not just our own that we use um, we can definitely put that in there thanks Anne. that's very helpful yeah great idea yeah so if you all have other ideas we would really welcome uh these we have uh as I mentioned, we are a contractor and we have that statement of work, but the statement of work has some leeway in what we can create and uh, uh, what we can write about and how we uh, how we talk and work with you all. So um, please be in touch. Uh, yes, if I could just interrupt you, yeah. um, as we have five minutes left. Perfect. Um, uh, we at Sector, we do have a survey for everyone who did attend. Um, first of all, thank you so much for attending, um, but I'm going to put it in the chat. If you guys would be willing to fill it out, that would be amazing. Back to questions. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Oh. oh, and uh, I, if I may also add, if you do anything in Spanish, please let me know or let in, any of us know. I uh, Some of the things that we do with our blog is share what you're doing um, with the Spanish speaking community. Um, like for example, one of our series is on Nidler funded products. Um, so like fact sheets, um, research briefs, et cetera, um, that we share in English and Spanish. So if you have anything in Spanish, please feel free to share that. Um, and I'll make sure to that, or we'll make sure that that gets included in those blogs. Um, and I, we also have a series called answer questions where we answer questions from the Spanish speaking community on a particular topic. Um, and we include, 
uh, items from the collection that are funded by Nidler, fact sheets, research briefs, et cetera, as resources um, for that community. All right, everyone, this has uh, been very rewarding and uh, doesn't have to stop here where you can certainly, uh, once again, you know, to send a note to us or there, NERC info, you have a question, you're in a research funk, you don't know where to go, um, go to the website and chat with the uh, information specialist, the chat's open business hours, so we always have somebody on that, that's a nice thing about the uh, uh, working from home, everyone can be connected and running to answer the phone. So um, this has been really wonderful to have. It's, uh, I appreciate uh, your time and your interest. It uh, helps us formulate our services and what we're doing. And once again, if you haven't been able to tell by now, we are all it, work on this project to help people out and to help you folks out. It's uh, more than just a uh, paycheck. It's uh, very rewarding to uh, um, be a participant in this uh, bigger efforts. Anyone else? Amanda? I, yes, I would the... just thank the four of you. That, that was an amazing presentation. And wow, just thank you for all that you guys do. Incredible work. <laughs> Wonderful. Been terrific. Back at you. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great long weekend. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Gorgeous weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.